lot of factors are responsible. We must be sincere to ourselves. Yesterday during the press conference, I was actually asking one of our colleagues, if our own coach can find it difficult in our own country, talking to us the press to, by, via English language, our own official lingua franca, how much the players, how does he communicate with them? How does he send his message? How does he communicate his tactics, his approach to the game? And that's why yesterday, even when the question was put to him, what's the approach for today's game? He was just in Maroon like beggar and about. And as a result, we saw today. So it, we, we should just keep telling us. Hello and welcome to 360 Sport. <laughs> that was the game between Nigeria and Guinea-Bissau right here in the city of Abuja, where we actually lost <laughs> our <laughs> that game to the Guinea-Bissau. But thank God, uh, we've eventually gotten the qualification ticket in our last game, where we actually uh, where we defeated uh, the Lone Stars of Sierra Leone right there in Morovia in Liberia, and now we we have qualified um, for the Nations Cup coming up next year in Cote d'Ivoire. That game was actually a very big one that when we lost it was a scare for Nigerian fans, for the players, the coaches and everybody and you heard that uh, there that people are complaining about Jose Pissero what are we to do about this man the way to go now nff has given him another contract okay let's leave that on that note i'm welcoming you to the show once again 360 sports this morning i'm emmanuel fashimi i will not be doing this alone i have um, a, a a brother all the way from vom plateau state that will be joining me via zoom but before uh he will be joining us let's go straight to the first story we have for you this morning we are toby amazon right there at Ostrava in Czech Republic. She came third. Well, um, we can say the, the, the race was not actually good enough, but these are all preparatory race for her uh, because Budapest, the World Championship that will be coming up in Budapest a few months from now, I think that, that is going to be the biggest stage where she's going to show her metal. Now, Jam uh, Jasmine Camacho Queen, Jasmine Kamacho Queen is uh, uh, is winning all the races right now. She has not lost this year, and yes, last night she also proved her mettle uh, that she is ready for Toby Amazon. And I know Toby Amazon also will actually up her, uh, up her game because these are part of uh, a part of it when you are the champion, where you are the one to uh, to be beating. And now everybody is standing up against Toby Amazon, but. Uh, it's not a bad one for her. It's her season personal best where she ran 12.47 seconds right there in Ostrava, Czech Republic. Jama Jasmine Camacho, queen of the Puerto Rican, Puerto Rico, winning that race, coming uh, first and then at uh, early of uh, US, coming second. And uh, Toby Amazon clocked a new season best of 12.47 seconds as she placed third in women's 100 meter hurd uh, hurdles at Ostrava Golden Spike. Behind winner Jasmine Camacho Queen, who won that race with a time of 12.42 seconds, and second place Tia Jones won uh, 12 uh, came second with 12.44 uh, seconds. And for Toby Amundson, uh, she ran 12.47 seconds. If you look at all, oh, if you look at uh, the time difference in between the three of them, that is not that too much. And the next uh, stop we have right now for Toby Amundson will be the Diamond League that will be coming out in Louisiana, Switzerland, where she was she's still going to be running against uh this uh this foes that she ran against uh, last night but uh it's not a bad race for her it's a season personal bet uh, best for uh, 40 uh 12.47 seconds is not a bad one and i can tell you when the world championship comes we are going to see a different toby amazon blazing out and uh, to tell you the truth i think she has been holding her own uh she she came back to her she came back to winning ways right there in jamaica she used that race to prepare herself for this uh, particular meeting in ostrava uh, ostrava and right now she came third and the next stop will be the luciana in, in switzerland and I have uh, Michael Abba Idoko all the way from Plateau uh, State, Vaughn, precisely joining me on the show. Michael Idoko, welcome on the show. Yes, good morning. I'm so happy to have me online. I'm happy to be part of this sports fraternity. Okay. Um, last night, Toby Amundson actually did be uh, did her best. Everything uh, actually, well, let me say, it went well for her. Though she ca she came uh, third in that race, but um, are you scared for Toby Amundson uh, come uh, Budapest in August? Yes, I am scared, and I'm not scared. 
I'm, I'm not scared because her first degree is in a health uh, promotion and so she knows what she needs to do uh, to keep her health intact in order to be healthy enough uh, for the Budapest contest. But I'm scared because she seems to be uh, have lost a step uh, from her blistering 2022 career uh, where she changed the narrative of Nigeria on the 22nd of July 2022. We believe, I believe that Toby and Musa may probably get back to winning, we'll get back to her best form. We've seen her win a race this year earlier. We've seen her try to score in the 200 meter where she dropped 23.02 seconds, trying her speed endurance. But I think Jack Jasmine Kamachoke right now looks better than first gold medal. But I still believe that Toby Amushan has a few months to put herself in, in place. And I believe she can still come back to her best. Uh, she can still come back to her best. Now, let's look at the race last night. Um, eventually, because everybody uh, was envisaging this to actually happen, including myself, uh, that uh, if Toby Amusan wins this race, or because the way ja Jasmine Camacho Queen uh, is actually running this season, this year, she has not lost any race. And for Toby Amusan, we know a few months, a few months back right now, she bought uh, a degree right there in, uh, in UK, uh, where she studied uh, sports uh, management. Uh, we all said, okay, maybe because of her education it, she was distracted leadership and then leadership and sports management to jamaica she won that race in jamaica to prepare for this but um now if, if you what uh is toby Amos, what is she going to do to actually get better of jasmine camacho queen because the next stop will be the luciana uh, uh diamond league uh by a few days away from now that will be coming up uh june 30th Yes, I believe that uh, Toby Amusa, now that she's done with her master's degree in leadership and sports management, it's time to concentrate, it's time to focus, no more paper presentations. Now every presentation will be on the track. And if you look at that race in Ostrava, Czech Republic, you will see that uh, the race was looking a bit more like uh, a photo finish. It was, she wasn't too far-fetched. I mean, 12 12 4 12 4 It shows that she's closing the gap between herself and uh, Jasmine Camacho Queen, and I believe in no time. Hopefully, as at uh, by the time they run in Lausanne, uh, Switzerland Diamond League, by then Toby and Musa must have closed the gap, and they will definitely be at par after the Lausanne meet. I believe uh, her confidence will be rejigged after the next Diamond League stop. Toby and Musa is one that I can put my money on. Yes, Toby Amuson is one that you can put your money on because we believe she can actually do it because, uh, like you mentioned, if you look at the, the difference in time between the three of them, it's not far-fetched, 12 points. Uh, 12.47 uh, seconds, 44 and 42. Look, look at the difference. It's not uh, at first in that race, Toby Amuson was leading, just uh, getting to the finishing line. That was when Jamsmi Kamacho Queen actually powered and pushed forward. Now, don't you think that is a problem for Toby Amuson? The finishing part of it right now. Yes, uh, you know Jasmine Kamacho Queen. If you look at her very well, she's well built. Uh, she's gifted uh, physically. She has a physical attribute. She has a height. And uh, she used it to her very best advantage. And so Toby Amusan will have to just work on that speed that she had that saw her clinch 12.12 in the semis and 12.08 in the finals and give her at least two steps ahead so that to enable her avoid uh, getting eclipsed or getting clipped before the uh, finish line uh, come Luzanne or even the Budapest Championships. Okay, come the uh, Budapest Championship. We believe Toby Amazon will actually watch, we we'll go over and watch that video again and know uh, where her lapses is and probably she's going to correct it. We are waiting for Luzanne race coming up uh, on the 30th of June, just uh, two days away from now. We'll be seeing her burning the track again uh, then before they head straight uh, to Budapest where I know Nigerian, uh, Nigerians are actually expecting a lot from Toby Amazon, uh, Nekwechi, Ruth Soro, S.A. Brume a lot now quickly let's just talk about that budapest uh, championship that will be coming up we have nigerians doing well right now in equity root to soro as a brume toby amuson <coughs> we, we are not, let's not forget nathaniel um we have a favor of philly and the rest of them now can we actually hold our can we dominate budapest yes we can dominate budapest 
as I speak to you now, I think uh, Omuzurike has the uh, second fastest 200 meters in the world this year. I mean, after uh, Noa Lyles, and of course, and uh, United, I think, is the, has the third fastest time. So, yes, in the 200 meters, I mean, if Omuzurike keeps his form, uh, I think we are definitely going to uh, see a finalist, uh, a Nigerian finalist, for the first time in God knows how long, probably 25 years. And for the 100 meters, I must tell you, God seen. I mean, as a uh, Ogone Brume is really doing well. He came second at the NCAA circuit and in the finals of the uh, U.S. Uh, cha uh, college championships. And he made us proud. We, he wasn't the only one. We also saw a Kintola and people actually also in that same finals. So I believe we have a formidable quartet to make a medal, to get a medal in the 4 by one at the Budapest World Championships. All right, we have a formidable quartet to actually get us a medal in the 4 by one uh, relay race right there in Budapest when the, when the championship will start. Let's move away from that story um, and head straight to uh, Hamamet in Tunisia where Nigerian wins uh, uh, gold uh, in tech ball. Tech ball is another sport that is just uh, coming up right now and for the first time we won a gold medal in the doubles of uh, the African beach game that is going up going on in tunisia nigeria made history at the finals of the 2023 african beach games winning her first tech book uh, tech ball gold uh, medal in hamamet tunisia the gold came through the mixed doubles event championed by the duo funsho funto samson and rashida bukola salau both uh, both of them put up a spirited effort to defeat madagascan duo of fani sora richia and Eric Sin Spencer 12 to 9 and then 12 to 10 to finish the best in the mixed double event. Now, for the first time, we are getting a gold medal in this particular sport. It's not a sport that is so popularized, but right now, um, day before yesterday, we, we got a medal, bronze medal in the in the, the in the sport, canoe and uh, rowing, Keno and rowing from uh, Esther Toko. And right now, we've also gotten another medal in a sport that is not that too popular, that is in tech ball. Now, this time around, is gold. Now, um, this achievement is a massive one for Nigerian and for these uh, for Funsho and Co. Now, how can we actually develop uh, these sports uh, called tech ball in Nigeria so that we can get more medals? Because by the next Olympics, we are envisaging that these sports will be showcasing in the next Olympics. Yes, it's Nigeria needs to really catch them young. Uh, Victor Yemade, who also got a silver, I mean, in the men's doubles and a silver in the men's singles, is Nigeria's number one and is Africa's number two. So it really comes as no surprise he was able to live up to the billing. I mean, it was announced that uh, he, he lost the first set, 12-3. But he was able to claw back to win the second set, 12-6, and unfortunately lost the last set, 12-8. Uh, but I think he gave a good account of himself. And uh, this is the period Nigeria needs to invest. I mean, this game is still in the formative years. Why can't we take advantage and have a world champion? I mean, we pay so much attention to football, I mean, or other sports, but we don't pay much attention uh, to games like tech ball, especially all these new games. So I, I, I urge, I mean, the sports uh, youths and sports minister uh, to uh, put things in place, ensure that uh, these players are properly taken care of, send them to Europe, let them get all the experience they need so that they can continue to maintain, I mean, at the top of Africa and probably the world in coming years, hopefully so that we can be part of Olympics and have more medal chances i have more medal chances let me remind you that we've not gotten another uh, sport new the new sports minister we've not gotten um our, uh, Bo president bola metunubu has not appointed anyone so we are waiting for the new minister to come on board and actually hit the ground running by by just uh, pay yeah. attention to sports and see how we can develop our, our sports and take it to an enviable height. And for Tech Ball, for the duo of Funsho and Co, congratulations to them, Oyemade and the rest of them, doing us proud right there in Hamamet, Tunisia, for the first time winning a gold medal in the sport that is not so popular in Nigeria. 
and even the world at large. Though Tech Ball, uh, the general, the world governing body has 34 members in Africa, which is actually a welcome development. And right now, they've won uh, a gold medal for Nigeria and for themselves. Congratulations to them. Let's move away from that story and head straight to the next story we have for you. This time around, we're going to be talking about some transfers in the local scene. Uh, transfers is going on in Europe. Also, in the Nigerian uh, Premier League, we have some transfer news for you also. So let's start with this one, where Rivers United uh, has actually acquired the services of Endurance, a dead Biri from Bayesa United. This is a diminutive midfielder, very strong uh, defender, I beg your pardon. He plays for Bayesa United. He's just 19 years of age. He played 14 times for Bayesa United in, the, in last season, though they were deducted three points. He was able to help Bayesa United to stick back in the Nigerian Premier League, as it will be called, from next season. Uh, this man acquiring his services, is it a good move from Bayesa to Rivers? Very close. Yes, it is a very good move. Uh, I think it's a good one for Endurance uh, Dedibiri. At least uh, he will get an opportunity uh, to play, I think, in the CAF Confederation Cup. Yeah. Uh, he's just 19 years of age. His future is very bright, and I think it's a big chance for him. I mean, who would not uh, jump at this offer? We just wish him the best and hopes uh, that this deal uh, goes through uh, so that he can join uh, the Rivers United. I think uh, that's a team uh, that has a good future, a good plan for young lads. And I think it's a good move for him. He should ensure that uh, this deal comes through uh, so that he can have an opportunity to up his game and at least lift him to the next pedestal as a defender. Yeah, lift him to the next pedestal. The, the, the thing is, he will be playing in the CAF Confederations Cup. That is in the continent, and that is a good one for him. Uh, though we might say the state is close, Rivers and Baez are not far apart, but it's a good one. Hope is home. That is what Endurance is trying to actually say. Now, let's move away from Nigerian transfer stories and head straight to Europe. Our first point of call will be in England, where Matteo Kovacic has actually completed his move to Manchester City at this point in time. I, I, this is one player, <laughs> whenever he plays, I used to, I, I, I just smile. I, I, whenever I watch him play, his runs in the, <laughs> in the feed uh, gets, in fact, gets, gets to me. I'll just be laughing at his run, but he's a, actually a very uh, good player. But going to Man City, now Manchester City is trying to acquire all the players they can get. Uh, can he, because we still have Rodri in that team, can Matteo Kovacic displace Rodri from that uh, midfield position. Uh, that will be a tall order. That will be a huge task. That will be a big mountain to climb. I mean, when a player is signed for 25 million to replace uh, Ike Gundogan, who is going uh, to Barcelona, I, I just I know that uh, it may he may not break into the starting lineups immediately. And if you know Guardiola very well. He is a very flexible coach. He could have three lineups at a time. And so when you don't impress uh, on your first impression, uh, you may just warm the bench for Pep Guardiola. So if he really wants to be part of the team and uh, really come off at the rotation, then I think he needs to hit the ground running uh, the moment he gets uh, to Manchester City. He has done well for himself. Four titles uh, with Chelsea, including the Champions League. And I think uh, his career looks... It really looks good right now. I just, uh, it's going to be very difficult. Manchester City are never tired of uh, signing big players. They are still going for Declan Rice. I mean, you are, you've won the treble and yet you still want to get all the best players uh, from the market. It shows the type of hunger, unprecedented hunger by Manchester City. Unprecedented their hunger from Manchester City. Good one for Matteo Kovacic as he has joined uh, these foot soldiers of uh, Pep Guardiola right there in the city of uh, Manchester. The, that's the blue side of Manchester. We also have the Reds there who are also holding their own in that city. But good one. Congratulations to uh, Matteo Kovacic for making that switch to Manchester City. He has to contend with the likes of uh, Rodri. Um, uh, Kevin Phillip is also there. And then he will join... Um, uh, Bernardo Silva in that midfield. Now, he has been touted to replace the ageless Ike Gondogan who has moved to Barcelona. Let's see how that move pans out at the end of the day. We know how Pep Guardiola normally tweak his team. Is Matthew Kovacic going to fit in? Let's see when the season begins. Let's move away from that story and talk about another transfer. This time around, it concerns a coach, a manager, a man who was sacked 
and now he has gotten um, a team to manage in person of Andre Pilo has been appointed as Sampdoria manager uh, for next season and this team just got relegated in the concluded uh, season and how is he going to bring Sampdoria back to uh, Syria A? Ah, let's see he has been announced he has been appointed as the manager for Sampdoria uh, is this a good one for uh, a man a caliber of Andre Pilo? Well, uh, when you look at his uh, uh, blissful career, I mean, he's arguably the greatest midfielder of his generation. Uh, we saw him in uh, Juventus. I mean, we saw him in AC Milan. We saw his exploits. As a player, he had the magic. But as a coach, he's yet to show us that he has that magic. Yes, we saw him uh, take care of the Serie C side of Juventus. And then much later, we saw him take care of the Serie B side. Uh, right now, he's battling to stay at the top. Andre Pirlo still, uh, he got his coaching badge, I think sometimes in 2019, 2020. I think Andre Pirlo still has a lot of work to do on himself. Yes, he's uh, just like Frank Lampard. He's trying to grow another formidable career in the coaching just the way he did as a player. But I think he still needs to work a little harder uh, so that he doesn't get sacked season after season. But I think uh, Andre Pirlo is one man that uh, has a genius in him, just like Zinedine Zidane. And he can be trusted at least uh, for a season or two just to see if he can bring out that, translate that ingenuity uh, from the field, I mean, to the sidelines as a coach. From the field or the sidelines of the coach. Uh, quickly, before we go on the show this morning, let's uh, talk about the last one uh, consigning David De Gea of Manchester United. A lot of rumor uh, have it that he was not going to stay in Manchester United because of the salary issue. But this time around, uh, he has extended his stay at Manchester United maybe by a season or more. Now, um, for David De Gea, um, this extension, is it a good one for uh, him? Barring that uh, this man, uh, Ten Hag, actually don't like his uh, style of uh, goalkeeping. He wants a goalkeeper that uses uh, feet to play uh, with players. But him staying at Manchester United, um, is it a good uh, decision from David De Gea? Quickly. <laughs> Yes, it's a good decision for David De Gea uh, because we don't know how many teams would uh, want to endure that uh, that weakness of him of not wanting to, I mean, play with the ball. But uh, his reflexes are uncanny. You don't see it in too many, I mean, goalkeepers. Uh, he's had clean sheets upon clean sheets. Uh, he's won a Golden Glove of the Year on a, a couple of times. I mean, Manchester United. I mean, arguably, is the second biggest club in world football. Out, out, outside Real Madrid. So I don't blame him if he wants to stay in Manchester. I don't blame him if he still wants the floodlights of Old Trafford to be upon him. Everybody that goes to Manchester would want to remain in Manchester for as long as he can. So I believe it's a good one uh, for David De Gea. He has proven himself and I think he deserves an extension. Yeah, he deserves an extension. That is it on the show. Mike Edoko, thanks for coming on the show. You're welcome. I'm so happy. Any day, any time. All right. I am Emmanuel Fashemi. Sports is life. Thanks for watching.